So today we're going to be provisionalizing a previously prep number 19. We're going to be using acrylic, and for supplies, we have our previously made stent. Um, we just use a suck down method for this. Um, I really hope you know how to make a stent, because if you don't, this video is kind of not going to be much help to you. Out of your league. Yeah. So we also have our liquid monomer and our polymer here. Uh, we have an eyedropper. We have a bowl of water. We'll get to this in a second. This is the Dr. Donaldson method. Um, they don't usually tell you that in class, but it's a big help. We'll get to that in a second. We also have some Vaseline. You won't be using the Vaseline in clinic um, with, on a real patient. It's so much easier to do in clinic on a real patient. The saliva kind of keeps it from getting locked on. So we're just going to make sure that we uh, lube up the uh, type of dent here nice and good. We don't want the provisional to get stuck on and it can kind of bond to the uh, plastic and rubber and really get engaged in the undercuts if you don't make sure that you have it lubed up. Okay, so we've lubed up the type of dent and now we're going to be mixing the acrylic in the stent. This is a little different than they show you in class. It's a lot easier for us, we think, to uh, do it right in the stent instead of mixing it separate and then trying to transfer it over and you don't know what stage to do with that and it just gets confusing. So we're just going to put a little drop of monomer in here against the acrylic stent. We did not put Vaseline on the stent. Some people say to, but I really don't like that method. And then we're just going to tap a little bit of acrylic in here and we're just going to keep going step by step. Mixing at each stage. And then before you put it on, you want to make sure you lose your gloss. Uh, okay, here you can see that uh, me, it's definitely from, like, the mountains of Peru. The consistency we want, it's hard all the way around. So we're going to go ahead and separate it from our stent. Just going to do that by pulling the stent apart, and it should come right out, just like that. You can see the gloss we have on it by placing it in the water. It looks as if it's already been polished, even though it has not. That's exactly what we are going for. Now you see this collar here around here. You look at this way, you can clearly see the margins. We're going to try and break away whatever excess we can. You can tell it's a thin shell, so we're not going to hurt the stent. The more you can break away right, break off right away, the quicker it's going to be to trim. Okay, so we have a coarse disc to start off, because you can see we do have a decent amount of excess we're going to need to trim. So you'll waste too much time if you sit there and uh, if you sit there and start off with a really light polishing disc. Speed's going to be right around 1500 RPMs. We're just going to start trimming. Okay, so when you're polishing your crown, what you want to do, you usually use pumice, coarse, medium, and fine. We're just going to show you really quickly. What you do is you want to keep your fingertips on the margins so you don't polish off your margins. And always polish away from the margin. Don't polish towards the margin like this. You're gonna ruin your you're gonna lose your margin. So keep your fingertips on the margin and polish away. Keep it on there. Light pressure. And um, also when you're polishing, don't leave the don't polish your contacts too much because you lose your contact. A lot of people make that mistake in the very beginning. So when you're polishing, just keep it on there a couple seconds. Firm good pressure. final product, a provisionalized number 19, and using Dr. Donaldson's method and proper pumicing, it's easy to come up with a beautiful smooth finish.